If you've been around in the internet somewhat recently, you may have seen an article floating around asking the tough question of why the kids these days find the image of a man standing on a sidewalk with his hands clasped together in a very casual way captioned, You know I had to do it to him, but instead of it being the original guy, it's Dr. Phil turned into an Eminem pulling that same pose on the side of his show funny. Or more accurately, they ask, why is millennial humor so weird? One such article is this one here, written by Elizabeth Brunig, whose last three letters of her last name may someday bite into the ass of anybody who says it out loud. Myself included. God fucking damn it. But the article is titled very directly, Why is Millennial Humor So Weird? With the tagline, Comedy that appeals to young people can be surreal and dark and completely meaningless. And in my opinion, that's a decently accurate surface level descriptor of the modern day's meme phenomenon. And I don't think it's too insane to say that our generation's humor has departed and evolved or devolved, depending on your perspective, compared to what it was even just a decade ago. The difference is so staggering and noticeable that it's a meme in itself to compare memes of the 2000s in all of their innocence to the comedic trash fire orgies of today. If you look up memes then versus now on Google Images, the memes then section will be the most innocent shit, where memes were pretty typically based on some basis of relatability and a person's relatable reaction to a relatable situation, or it's relying on some kind of other joke setup. And while some of that does still exist today, just in very different contexts or in very different forms, nowadays a picture of a cat with two legs and okay hand emojis for feet with the caption when you walking is enough to suffocate a man with laughter, like a picture of a guinea pig with butter on it that has a crying cat's face masked onto it didn't used to physically kill me every time I looked at it. That shit is cursed. So I think it's understandable that generations of yesteryear don't quite get the humor that we find so much laughter, joy, and comfort from the perils and tragedies of the real world in. Like for real, as an experiment to see how weird your parents think you are for what you laugh at, go find some good deep fried memes and have them react to them. If you want to do this, you can just record it or recount it through words. But if you want to share, please tweet the results to me at quite. I genuinely am curious what other people's parents might think of this modern sense of humor. Now to those very same grandparents and parents who may just be now now grasping the concept of some of the memes from the 2000s and are completely overwhelmed or dumbfounded by the memes of today, let me do my best to try and be your tour guide through this twisted world. I have a very hastily and poorly made tour brochures for the Gen Xers, Baby Boomers, and Generations Beyond. Okay, enjoy that. This isn't going to be a super analytical view of modern humor and your memes in all their ironic glory, or a meticulously in-depth look of how the fuck we got to this point. While there's some analysis that I am going to try to do to the best of my ability, I'm not smart enough to talk about postmodernism or whatever the fuck it's called in any capacity capacity that's less than bullshit, so I'll try to link to a couple videos in the description that talk about that subject, or things like it, if you're interested further in how memes are poisoning the minds of the youth. Now the question itself of how did humor degrade slash upgrade to where the fuck it is now isn't entirely new. The article I mentioned earlier in this video was actually written in 2017, and the memes then versus now kind of thing is referenced pretty often either in a comedic sense or even an analytical sense pretty frequently. So to ease us into this whirlwind, why don't we touch on that relatability factor that I said was much more prevalent in older memes, except in the context text or forms that I said it may appear in more frequently today. That different context I was talking about is often in the form of Facebook memes, where the older generations will post things like minion memes unironically. Someone just called me normal. I have never been so insulted in my entire life. Stuff like that. They post the relatable kind of content to share with their friends, and it's usually enjoyed in their circles or in their Facebook groups. At least that's how it works from my understanding. I lost my Facebook account many years ago when it fell out of my pocket while I was swimming. I never saw that thing again. Now while those Facebook memes I was talking about earlier are more or less those relatability memes from the older times, just posted by different types of people than they were back then, relatable humor is still used heavily in state-of-the-art modern memes. But the subject matter in said relatability seems to be much darker than it used to be. And while it's still used to capture a person's reaction to situations that many of us can envision ourselves in, the means of capturing those reactions are often different than they used to be. Namely, in modern times, they are often captured in the form of Spongebob screenshots. When you eat her ass and then she flips you over and starts eating yours. Now because these memes are darker, they become inherently more niche, at least in the amount of people who can say that they've truly experienced what the meme is in capturing. That's not to say that the everyday person can't envision themselves in the situation that is being described in the meme. Ass eating is such a commonly publicized act and art form in today's social climate, so even if one hasn't participated in the act themselves, they can imagine what it might be like based on the experiences shared by others. These experiences oftentimes shared in the form of these memes. And thanks to this, people can still empathize with the comedy in Mr. Krabs getting his brains blown out by mind-numbingly good and world-class ass eating. But as these situations and memes become
become increasingly more niche, the reliance on imagining what it's like to be in these situations based on what you already know and have heard from others in order to get a joke becomes more and more essential. Now this dark humor isn't just limited to shock crudeness of things like sex acts. It can get legitimately dark where memes tackle the throes of human suffering and depression. On the website reddit.com, there exists a subreddit called r slash me IRL, a subreddit community where the caption of each post is the same as the name of the subreddit, me IRL, and attached to each post is an image or video or meme that a poster believes to be an accurate representation of their current mental or physical state. Oftentimes this image is ironic, but that's not the reason I bring this subreddit up. A spin-off subreddit exists of r slash me IRL called r slash to me IRL for me IRL, which is self-described as a subreddit for memes that hit too close to home or are too real for subs like r slash me IRL. Under that description is a disclaimer that r slash to me IRL for me IRL is an r slash depression, a PSA that therapy is helpful, and a warning about jokes relating to suicide, depression, and self-harm being present on the subreddit. The posts on the subreddit are similar to r slash me IRL in that all of them have the same title, the name of the subreddit, to me IRL for me IRL. An example of just one of many posts on the subreddit is one like this. A picture of a box labeled swift pain stoppers, extra strength pain reliever, and the contents of said box are bullets. The rabbit hole goes even deeper than that though. There exists a subreddit called r slash to me IRL for to me IRL for me IRL, where memes are posted that hit too close to home to be posted to the subreddit that is made for memes that hit too close to home to post on me IRL. It has a similar notice that the subreddit doesn't sanction suicide and also encourages getting help if you need it, emphasizing unironically to not kill yourself. The relatability in these memes people post to these two subreddits often comes from some of the suffering that the users are going through and can relate to each other with. And it's where I've been able to find most of the dark humor that isn't just dark for the sake of being dark, but rather stems from real experience more often than it does from relating to experiences that one's only heard about. But speaking of memes that use a viewer's prior knowledge of things to be more understood, memes today are much more complex than they used to be. In general, they have so many more moving parts. When memes first started, at least insofar as when they first started on the internet, as we said, they were usually more basic and easier to grasp. And people closer to my age kind of had them when we were younger. And in a way, we were raised with these memes becoming the foundation for our sense of humor today. To try and illustrate this point better, let me refer to an infamous image that requires some prior knowledge of memes to fully understand or see how everything fell into place to create such a monstrosity. I'm sure many of you have seen that image of Lord Farquaad from Shrek that has Markiplier's face superimposed onto it, with just the letter E as the bottom text caption. Oh, and also the Farquaad head with the Markiplier face has been put on Mark Zuckerberg's body during his congressional hearings. Let me try to break down the stillbirth of a meme to the best of my ability. So to understand the parts, you have to first be acquainted with Lord Farquaad from the first Shrek movie, and the concept that comes from just this concept as a character. Next, you need to know who Markiplier, the YouTube Let's Player, is, in order to get the absurdity of his face being on Lord Farquaad's, of all people's head. I'm pretty sure the image of what I just described alone was the original version of the Markiplier Farquaad head meme, and that on its own is already really fucking strange. Following that though, you need to be familiar with what happened earlier this year in Mark Zuckerberg's congressional hearing, which was getting mean to shit in general at the time, to understand the context of putting a Markiplier Farquaad head on Mark Zuckerberg's body. Next, some understanding of deep fried memes as a meme genre will probably help when it comes to understanding the amount of horrid filters this thing must have been forced to run through. And lastly, that foundation of our comedy that I said those older memes helped us to form today is important to understanding the E bottom text caption. 2000s memes had these captions unironically as part of the joke, whereas nowadays these captions are used ironically as part of the joke, or used to make fun of them in things like the aforementioned deep fried memes, in far more absurd ways than they were used before they were used ironically. Like back then, it was car too old for aux input, car too new to use cassette to aux adapter. A heartbreaking relatable situation with a picture of a person crying as the reaction. Now the caption is just the letter E, with the image being the Markiplier Farquaad abomination that we just tried to break down. I remember a couple years back, my friend sent just the letter H into a group chat, and when I saw it, I couldn't stop fucking laughing. But all these moving parts that need to be understood in order to know how a meme like this one came to be in existence. So much prior knowledge is required to get the increasingly more abstract jokes, that it's harder and harder for someone who's an outsider to the culture, say someone like a parent or grandparent, to understand it because they didn't grow up with these things to act as a baseline for their comedy. And it's hard for them to get into it because there's such a high bar of entry of prior knowledge now. Millennials and Gen Zers and beyond grew up living and breathing memes from their infant stage to adulthood, or teenagehood, whatever age group they happen to be in. Amalgamating in this mess of dark humor memes and surrealism, the article we mentioned earlier seemed to be so stumped by. In short, memes nowadays are more complex than ever. Some are masterpieces and commentary on the human experience through the lens of irony and humor, or just ironic in making fun of the landscape of memes in years past. Some act as a new form of expressing our painful human emotions and comedy, something humans have done for ages. This is just one admittedly bastardized modern version of that, while others are literally nothing at all, just 
just like the article mentioned earlier in the video. To anybody who was able to follow this through, I applaud you. That's an achievement on its own. But I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new, subscribe. This was a bit of a departure from the usual kind of stuff I do. I, it, if you couldn't tell from the angle and shit, it's, it's different. But if you guys wanna see more stuff like this video in this kind of format, or you have any topics that you think I can cover in the same kind of way that I covered this one, be sure to leave that in the comments below. I have a podcast with Wild Spartans and FPS Diesel called Loudmouse. We upload two new episodes every week on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and we're up on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Quite and on Instagram at Quite.png. Links to both of those in the description. And lastly, I have a Discord server. Link to that in the description as well if you're interested. Anyways, this has been Quite, and I will see you guys next time.